Namaste to all the yoga sadhakas. Should I eat non-veg or vegetarian food? Or if I come to yoga class, is there a requirement that I should stop eating non-veg? What is the food that scriptures recommend us? All these questions are something which is commonly asked by many practitioners who get into the stream of yoga. In this video and a series of video, I am trying to explain all these concepts from different different perspectives. You can also watch the Annam Brahman playlist where many eminent scholars have explained this particular aspect in a lot more detail. So veg versus non-veg, that's exactly what we are going to understand in this video. And in this video, I'm going to explain the difference, taking some anatomical differences between different species. Why anatomy? Let me explain. Because every animal species in our in our in our world depends on food for survival so the entire anatomy of every species is modified in a way that we can get the food so depending on the kind of food that we are supposed to eat our anatomical structures are designed in such an in certain fashion so let me explain this in more detail the first is the behavior itself so here what i'm doing is i'm just comparing the behavior of different species like carnivore which mainly on meat, omnivore which is like both meat as well as plant based diet, herbivores mainly on plants and in that special category is frugivores which are mainly surviving on fruits and also we humans. So if you look at the speed of dif different species, carnivores were all like wild animals right, we call, we call them as wild animals. So they all have to go and hunt for the food and they have to run fast so that's why they have very high speeds when it comes to running. But whereas the human or the frugivores, uh, they pretty, pretty much pick the fruits or uh, anything from the plants or the trees. So that's why you don't have to run anywhere to find the food. That's why their running speeds are, uh, are low. And if you look at endurance, although the wild animals can run very fast, the carnivores, they have very low endurance. They can just sprint fast and they, can, they get tired very, very quickly. But whereas the herbivores, they can have a little high endurance because they have to run away from the carnivore. So they have very high endurance, they can sustain the running for a longer period of time. Okay? And animals uh, like human beings and frugivores, we have some kind of an average kind of an endurance because we don't have to hunt or uh, anything like that, but we still need endurance to run away from wild animals. When it comes to sleep, if you look at a carnivore, it kind of takes a big chunk of an animal in, inside the body and it rests for a long time. It can take one meal and it can just survive without a meal for a for, a, for hours or days together. But whereas it comes to the frugivores, it is taking a very small fruits or even herbivores. Like just have to just have to pluck some things and they just have to eat little by little. So because they are taking little by little, the calorie intake is also very low. So that's the reason they kind of, uh, they don't have, they spend most of the time looking for food or they are just looking for eating and all of those things. So they don't have uh, much time to sleep. That's why the sleep cycles are relatively low. You can consider that way. And if you look at the, the way the claws, which is nothing but the, the nails, you can say, okay? The way the nails are designed. So because the, the carnivores have to go and catch the prey, they need a very, very long nails, which is very sharp and pointed. We call them as claws, which is like sharp. So they can just shred the meat and they can eat the meat. But when it comes to uh, uh, frugivores, we don't need to, okay? We don't have to go and kill something. So that's the reason anatomically we have a very, very short nails because all that we have to do is probably uh, remove the peel of a fruit or something like that, which is much more doable with the, with the kind of uh, claws that we have or the, or the nails that we have. And looking at the teeth itself, and if you look at the carnivore, the carnivore have a teeth which is like, canine, like canine teeth, which is long nails, which are required to catch the prey, shred the meat, you know, all that needs that, that canine tooth. But we humans, we don't have it. Okay, or even frugivores animals don't have it. And our teeth resembles very, very similar to a frugivore animal, which is a fruit eating animal. Even herbivores don't have canine because all that they need is, they just have to uh, kind of uh, tear the grass or you can, you can just say, and they just have to, they need a very broad molars to shred the food. That's the kind of a modification that we need in order to, for the kind of food that uh, the, the herbivores or frugivores eat. And if you look at the saliva, the saliva of, uh, of a carnivore is like we is highly acidic in nature. 
So why? Because that kind of that acid itself sometimes it kind of uh, injects and it kills the 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 spray itself. Also, and there is no digestive enzyme. It just gulps. It, the whole objective is to just get out of the prey, catch it, and gulp it in. That's it. There is no absolutely no digestion happening in the mouth. But whereas it comes to uh, uh, animal species, uh, sorry, human and uh, the frugivores or herbivore species, the saliva is more alkaline in nature. When I say alkaline, it's more basic in nature. Also, it has a lot of uh, the digestive enzymes inside the, the saliva itself. Why? Because we spend more time chewing it. If you look at any horse or anything or, the, or a cow, right? It just spends some time, you know, always shredding the food, um, say, and then gulping it in. So that's why there's a lot of digestion happening there uh, in the saliva. This again, another anatomical uh, modifications that are there in different species. And if you could look at the digestive system itself, now, if you look at the length of the digestive system, see the, 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 the carnivores or the omnivores which feed on meat, they have a very, very shorter digestive system. The reason is very simple. The meat which is kept outside, it starts decaying very fast. Compared to a fruit or a vegetable which is kept outside, it can stay a little longer there. You can just think of it, right? Even if for a day, if you keep a meat outside or if an, if an animal is died near your house, how stinky the entire environment becomes. It smells bad. So that is the reason the, the food that is eaten should be digested very quickly. So that's why they have a very shorter digestive, digestive system so they can pass through the entire system very quickly and they can just get all the things from that as much as, as fast as possible. But whereas it comes to herbivores, the digestive system is really, really long. Even in the same, same is with frugivores as well as the humans. Uh, the reason is simple because uh, the kind of food that we eat or we are supposed to eat uh, the, the plant-based diet, it needs to be fermented before it can be absorbed in our body or sometimes it has to be uh, converted into different stages before we, it, it is worth absorbable. And that is one of the reason why we have a relatively longer digestive system so that the food spends more time so that we can digest it properly or rather absorb it properly we can say. Let us continue with the digestive system and look at the, the shape of the intestine itself. And if you look at a carnivore or an omnivore, the digestive system is relatively smooth. The intestines are really smooth. So the food passes through them uh, very easily for the reason I have already mentioned. When it comes to herbivore or frugivore or human beings, we have a lot of uh, uh, bumpy kind of a structure in the, in the intestine. So that the food has to really pass through them. So the reason is it has to spend more time in the intestine to get absorbed okay, by different structures. And also, we need a dietary fiber in our diet in order for the, uh, the food to be very easily, is for, for, the, for the food to pass through the intestine very easily. Now we will continue with the digestive system and just see the, the concentration of or the acidic nature of the stomach itself. And this is from a, the, from a, from a paper, uh, the evolution of stomach acidity and its relevance to the human microbiomes. And what exactly it is shown here is, uh, there are different, uh, the, the, the pH value, this is stomach pH. Uh, the pH value indicates how acidic or how basic the stomach stomach is. And if you see, this is all the carnivores. And as you go move up the ladder, it's all more uh, uh, herbivores. And the humans somewhere sit in between. This is adult human, okay? So human is somewhere in between. And if you just look at it, the, 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 the stomach pH or the stomach of a carnivore is lot more acidic in nature. And compared to human or compared to a uh, herbivores, which is lot more less acidic in nature. Because the reason is simple, because the kind of food that a carnivore eats, it needs to be digested very quickly and the, it's, a, it's an animals that it is intaking and it will have a lot of unnecessary microorganisms inside the animal which also has to be uh, destroyed and all of those reasons. So for this to happen effectively, the concentration of the acid content in the stomach is relatively high in a carnivore compared to an herbivore. And also, the time it takes for the food to digest. In a carnivore, it can digest the food in a very lesser amount of time. Because the reason is simple, as I already mentioned, the flesh cannot stay longer because it starts rotting sooner. But when it comes to a herbivore, it takes really long time to digest. So it just stays there inside. It just goes through different stages because the processing that it needs to uh, happen for the food to be absorbed is quite high, as I mentioned already. And frugivores and humans are very similar kind of a digestive times. And 
if you look at all these uh, different kinds of food, this is like a an experiment you can do, right? You can just keep all these kind of food, a meat, vegetables, fruits, cells, pulses and everything. And if I just blindfold you and just go and just pick a food which suits you, what will you pick? By looking at this, by just looking at, by, by going to the smell of it. Mostly you will not pick a flesh because it smells bad. Okay, assuming I have not put any masala on the flesh, it's just a raw flesh. So, or even if you look at it, if you just look at it, a raw flesh compared to a fruit, if it is raw and I don't have masala again, if I ask you to eat a raw food, what will you pick? Preferably a fruit and not a flesh. Okay, and all this is, an, is a natural uh, instinct, it is, it is telling us that we are all meant to be more herbivores or in that more fugivores kind of a species. And that's why there is a very, I like this quote, so R.V. Diamond, it's, it's a beautiful, uh, uh, beautiful thing he says. He says, people are just not meant for eating meat. And if you put a baby, on, baby in a crib with a apple and a rabbit, if he eats, an, if he eats a rabbit and plays with a apple, I will buy you a new car. So all, all that is trying to say is, it's summing up the whole thing. If you look at the anatomical differences of different species, humans are more closely related to a, a species of frugivores category. And that's what all the anatomical modifications that we have closely resembles to a frugivores, not to a carnivore. This is one of the uh, things that the nat nature is built in us or nature is telling us that what you are supposed to eat. Now, what you eat, it's your decision. And now, in the coming videos, I'm going to explain more of these uh, from different perspectives on, of yoga and how it helps in your practice. The kind of food also helps in your helps in your mind state, because at the end of the day, yoga is all about controlling your mind. So I'm going to talk more about this in the coming videos. Thank you so much.